Today's topic is about probe. What is probe in molecular biology that we will look in this video. Probe is a single stranded polynucleotide of DNA or RNA. Simply that DNA or RNA is made up of the nucleotides and this nucleotide same nucleotide is utilized for the making of the probe. So this probe that is single stranded polynucleotide. Probe can be composed of complementary DNA. This complemented DNA produced from the mRNA with the help of reverse transcriptase enzyme. One more, fragments of genomic DNA cleaved by the restriction enzyme from the genome that is also useful for the making of probe. Chemically synthesized oligonucleotides or occasionally RNA, these all can be utilized as a probe. Now, generally commercially utilized probe that is labeled probe and that is labeled with a radioactive molecule that is P32, radioactive phosphate molecule and with the help of that probe is labeled because phosphate is abundantly present in the polynucleotide chain. Now, how this traditionally nucleic acid probe is prepared that is explained in this picture. First that if you are needed a particular protein and that protein have a particular amino acid sequence. If that sequence like glycine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid then a particular genetic codon you can identify it. But only limitation with this traditional nucleic acid probe preparation is that sometimes glycine have a multiple genetic codon because of that codon degeneracy. So sometime this probe have a limitation because of the multiple codon degeneracy. Now further once that probe is prepared a chemical synthesis with the help of synthesizing oligonucleotide chain that probe is synthesized and that can be utilized for detection of particular gene. So that is preparation of traditional nucleic acid trace probe based on the particular amino acid sequence of the protein. Now exactly how this probe is working it, it is explained in this picture simple double stranded DNA. Now over that we have to detect a particular gene with the help of probe. So first this double stranded DNA is with the help of heat or alkali is converted into the single stranded DNA. So that is denaturation of the DNA by heat or alkali. So simply single stranded DNA over that label probe is added. Once label probe is added as per the complementary or base pairing rule this probe will hybridize only with the complementary sequence of the DNA or targeted DNA. So if it is attached and under radioactivity with the help of this x-ray or autoradiography we can detect whether that probe is attached over the particular DNA or not. So that is use of the probe. Now exactly how it is occurring that is explained in this picture. Single colony that is lice so a DNA is separated. Now is this separated DNA that is again denatured. So with the help of heat or alkali now over that denatured DNA whether a targeted gene is present or not. So probe is labeled with radioactive P32 and if it is attached over the targeted gene then we can detect under the autoradiography and if it is was present the radioactivity will be seen and we can detect that particular gene or targeted gene present in the colony. Further sometimes this hybridization or probe utilization need gel electrophoresis. So how this gel electrophoresis is useful that is explained a technique that uses an electrical field to separate molecule on the basis of size. So first we can separate DNA based on the size because DNA contains negatively charged phosphate group it will migrate in an electric field towards the positive electrode. So when it is moving what happens? shorter molecule migrates more rapidly through the pores of a gel then do longer molecules of DNA. So separation of DNA is occurring based on the length of the DNA. Gels composed of polyacrylamide which can separate DNA molecule that differ in length by only one nucleotide even a one nucleotide difference over the DNA that can be separated with the help of polyacrylamide gel are used to determine the base sequence of the DNA. Further in this gel electrophoresis agarose gels are used to separate longer DNA fragments that have a larger size difference. So polyacrylamide and agarose gel that you have to remember. Now the bands of DNA in the gel can be visualized by various techniques. So normally that DNA is not visible with the normal eye. So it is with the help of various technique it is visualized. Staining with dyes such as ethidium bromide allows direct visualization of DNA bands under ultraviolet lights. So with the help of this ethidium bromide we can visualize that DNA fragments. 
so specific sequence are generally detected by means of a labeled probe so whether that dna is separated properly or not that can detect with the help of ethidium bromide now over that separation of dna bands whether that particular sequence of dna is present or not that can be detected with the help of labeled probe so further exactly how this gel electrophoresis is useful that is shown so mixture of dna fragments of different size is there so there are three helicots are there and in that a different fragments of dna is present now generally that all helicots are passed to this electrophoresis here a electrophoresis negative to positive charge so this dna molecule will move towards a positive charge so when this sample is added this type of band separation will be started now stain once that separation is completed stain gel with a dna binding dye that is mostly ethidium bromide so that gel which is containing this dna fragment that now we can visualize under the ultraviolet lights now visualize band by fluorescence under ultraviolet light longer fragments that cannot move faster but shorter fragments towards the positive side now further with the help of marker dna further dna uncut or sometime a lambda dna hin 3 or sometime e coli dna uncut or e coli dna with further hin 3 and marker dna these are the different type of separation with the help of this different restriction endonuclease enzyme that is shown in this picture so here 8000 base pair 4000 base pair and 500 base pair so 500 base pair that is move faster as compared to 8000 base pair so based on that it is separated with the help of ethidium bromide we can visualize under the ultraviolet light now further this probe how it is working over this gel electrophoresis so detection of specific dna sequence that is possible with the help of hybridization and blot technique so simply it is explained in this picture hybridization of nucleic acid suppose that two different dna fragments are there we have to detect a particular sequence of dna and that is possible with the help of this probe so this probe that is radioactively labeled so if that complementary sequence is present then only that it will attach over the particular DNA sequence and that is also called a southern hybridization. Same way, sometime that DNA that is producing RNA and particular type of RNA that is present or expressed in some particular type of the cell. Suppose that beta cell of pancreas that is containing abundant amount of mRNA particularly for the insulin production. If that probe is added, so that is mostly complementary DNA. So this complementary DNA as per the hybridization, so if complementary sequence is present then it will attach and this particular attachment over this complementary DNA which is radioactively labeled probe we can detect. So that is called a attachment over the RNA and complementary DNA that is called northern hybridization technique. So this southern hybridization technique that is utilized for the DNA detection or detection of particular DNA molecule in the cell and this northern hybridization technique that is utilized for the detection of particular RNA molecule in the cell. So that's all about the particular probe, its utilization and its application in the southern and northern blotting techniques.